Anytime you threaten people's rights, you're going to have a problem. Warren Lacasse can't believe it happened in the state of Oregon. Doesn't mince words. Can't believe that people are so stupid that they would give away their Second Amendment rights. Oregon's gun law has backfired. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms for your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And let's talk about this. Oregon. Now, they just passed, well, the ballot measure 114 passed, which was a restriction on, is a magazine capacity restriction, of course, and of course it was colorfully titled the Reduction of Gun Violence Act. You know, it just amazes me that these people think that passing laws that only law-abiding will follow is somehow going to reduce criminal activity, but boy, I tell you, they're on a whole different level. But I'm going to go ahead, you saw part of the video in the opening, but I'm going to go ahead and play this. Once again, context, just see, so you know, know where we're coming from. Anytime you threaten people's rights, you're going to have a problem. Warren Lacasse can't believe it happened in the state of Oregon. Doesn't mince words. Can't believe that people are so stupid that they would give away their Second Amendment rights. Lacasse owns the Gun Room Inc. on Southeast Foster. Since Oregon voters passed Measure 114 last week, tightening gun laws, he says his gun sales have doubled. And across Oregon, the number of people trying to buy guns is soaring. Before the election, Oregon State Police tells us they averaged around 850 background checks a day from people trying to buy a gun. Now, since Election Day, that average is closer to 4,000 a day, an exponential increase to an already backlogged system. What do you think? You know, they're going to take your rights away. People are, people are responding like you can't believe. To be clear, Measure 114 does not take away the right to own a gun. It does ban new sales of high-capacity magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, but includes an exception for those who already own those magazines. The bigger change is the new permit process. It requires safety training, a background check, and a fee, even for those with a concealed handgun license. OSP is still working on a standardized permit application for it, and they don't have much time. Measure 114 kicks in December 8th. If you don't have a firearm, now's the time to buy one. That's because opponents worry that after the 8th, it could be impossible to buy one without a streamlined system in place. I don't have to convince you how urgent this is. Lift Every Voice is the nonprofit behind Measure 114. When it passed, Reverend Mark Knudsen said he was humbled by everyone who helped push it through. Those who oppose this, we honor their opinions and, and, and really want a dialogue as we move forward with this. But we did want a victory for our children and youth and for all the families in this state who have lost somebody to gun violence, who have been crying out, please, can we do something? It's possible this something could result in nothing. Critics are discussing lawsuits that could postpone or even stop the new law from taking effect. You know, this thing ain't over and it is totally unconstitutional and uh, we'll see what happens. There's also much debate over how officers would even enforce the new gun law. The sheriffs of both Lynn and Union County have said they won't enforce at least part of the law should it take effect. And this week, the Marion County Sheriff said his office would not focus investigations on magazine capacity issues because of limited resources. David. You heard that and you saw that. You know, uh, it always amazes me that people, and you know, I'm referring to the priest there, who used, you know, used their position to push technically unbiblical ideals because the Bible is very clear on self-defense. And I will do a video on that from purely a biblical perspective on you have the right to defend yourself to the point of loss of your own life to save someone else's life. Hopefully you save your own. But that's a whole nother video. But I do get tired of these people using that, as, and especially when it comes to guns, as a crutch. They use scripture as a crutch to justify their position when it doesn't work. Because none of this is going to stop crime, but 
I'm going to jump over here, the Western Journal, titled, Oregon's Gun Control Law Backfires Immediately. Oregon's newly passed laws tightening the state's gun restrictions led to a massive uptick in attempted firearm purchase, according to NBC affiliate KGW TV. Of course, same thing happened here in Connecticut 2013 when they passed SB 1160. Boy, gun dealers could not keep guns in the store. It was crazy. But... Ballot Measure 114 was passed during the midterm elections and is credited as one of the most restrictive gun laws in the country. It's like a competition. You know, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Oregon, they're all trying to compete with each other so you can come up with the dumbest laws that don't work. But sending background checks skyrocketing from 850 per day prior to the midterm to 4,000 per day. Wow. Whew, this one was 400%, more 400%. The measure often referred to as a Reduction of Gun Violence Act required deeper background checks, firearms training, fingerprint collection, and a permit to purchase any firearm, according to legislation set to be effective in December. The Oregon State Police were more than more than 18,000 transactions during election week, resulting in a backlog in background checks, according to KGW. In 2020, COVID-19 restrictions caused a backlog in background checks. There were a lot of gun sales during COVID. It was pretty crazy. That eventually leveled off right before the elections, the Oregon State Police reported. Okay. The measure requirement have caused controversy for gun owners in Oregon, leading Lincoln County Sheriff Curtis Landers to release a statement Wednesday clarifying the new law. Now, he clarified the permit process, stating that training is similar to requirements for obtaining a concealed handgun license, but will require that all residents who want to purchase a gun fire the weapon during training. Okay, so the gun that you're going to buy, you have to fire during training, but you need a permit to buy it? Hmm, he's going to have to explain that. Landers also addressed the magazine capacity restrictions in the measure, which requires a 10 round pick capacity, telling residents that magazines over 10 rounds can be legally purchased, but it must be before the law goes into effect. And once again, all, all the uh, magazine manufacturers are gearing up for the, you know, the rush. The magazine, uh, the measure's magazine restrictions being challenged as unconstitutional, as it's being challenged in other states. And a federal lawsuit has been filed in California's Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, according to KGW, which is interesting because I believe, I thought that California, I'm going to have to research this, but off the top of my head, California already had a lawsuit concerning magazine capacity restriction, and a judge already said, no, you can't restrict the magazine. So I'm going to look into that a little bit, but if the court rules that it's unconstitutional, it will apply to both California and Oregon. Okay, I don't need to get into that. Now, this same sheriff, Landers, says that he does not agree with the ballot measure 114. He will enforce it. I know this law is very controversial and passed by a very narrow margin. The branches of government are very clear and law enforcement is in the executive branch with the duty to enforce laws, which is really sad. It should be to protect the people and the Constitution. But it's, it seems to me he's saying we're doing the bidding of the elite The judicial branch evaluates and interprets the law as constitutional or not, he said. National Rifle Association is working against the measure and identify key issues in the measure's language. Okay. I'm not going to get into all that. That's fine. But this happens every single time. I witnessed it here in Connecticut in 2013. It happened in California when they passed the magazine ban. Every time you restrict something, this is like prohibition of the 1900s, you know, once you tell people they can't have something, whether they want it or not, they go get it. it. It doesn't make any sense. And none of this is going to reduce crime, which they claim is the idea behind passing this law. It's not going to change nothing. Crime, criminal activity will continue. It might increase. Don't know yet. But we do as a society, we tend to coddle the criminal element and punish the law abiding. That's that's the new trend with with this whole, especially over the last two years. But let's keep an eye on Oregon, see what's going on there. Of course, there are going to be lawsuits against the magazine capacity. They're not being told what they can and cannot purchase. There don't seem to be any firearm restrictions, but they need to stay one ahead and they need to sue, get on top of this and sue them over this now because you don't say nothing they'll figure hey everything's cool and they'll keep going but let me know what you think as always you can leave your comments in the comment section below and as always any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed please like share comment subscribe
Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.